So I'm excited for you guys to hear uh, today about how to add a little bit more leverage to your life. And if you would, please welcome to the stage our friend Justin Nelson. All right, on. Hello, how are you guys? Good. So Kevin and Fred, so they've been using VA since 2009. I think I was in like third grade. So that was amazing. I always have to give them shit on that. So um, again, my name's Justin Nelson. I'm going to fly through. They obviously said I'm a sponsor. We'll spend about a minute and a half to three talking about how at the end, if you guys want to use us, how to do that. But 27 minutes are going to be just straight value of just tactical. Do this, do this, do this, do this. Just so I can get a breakdown of the room. And who in here are solo agents? Solo agents, perfect. Uh, small teams, two to 10, cool. And then 10 plus, 10 plus team members, admin. Uh, who's ad who is admin in here? By the way, they're my favorite people in the world. So cool, well, so I'm gonna fly through this if that's okay with you guys. Um, but before I get started, do I have the permission to challenge you guys today? Because some of you guys that know me, you know I'll challenge you. If you don't know me, you just think I'm some 26-year-old punk up here that just magically found his way up here. Um, part of those are true. Both are true, actually. So, um, so my background is I kicked off in real estate, officially licensed at the age of 18. For those that don't know, my dad, Mike Nelson, um, I had the honor of he basically left his corporate job when I was 15 years old and let me kind of go alongside of him. So you heard Ben Kinney speak earlier. I remember being 16 years old and I was at the Shamu Resort or whatever that was, and I had no clue what was going on, right? I just saw a guy in the back of the room, really quiet, making a shit ton of money, and at the time, he was playing all these games on his phone the entire time, and I was like, why the fuck am I gonna go to college for engineering when I could be like Ben, right? And I don't know if that's a good thing or not to be like Ben, he's back there, but everything about Ben I love, like quiet, reserved, but is a great business owner. So shout out to my dad and people like Ben that have really taught a lot in this industry. Um, back in 2019, after a few years of real estate success with my dad, I broke off and ended up starting a coaching company at about 1,400 coaching clients. Then, fun story, April of 2020, um, my team was about, I was in the coaching business, in LA was about to start in April of 2020. I was about to go on stage and speak, and then COVID hit. And so during that time, I had just launched the virtual assistant company. And so the virtual assistant company for us is about three years old, and we're about to hit our 5,800 virtual assistant in just three years. And so I say that not to pat on the back, but to go, if there is any issue that you ever have with virtual assistants, just hit me up, ask me a question. I don't care what virtual assistant company they're with, I will still help you just out of the goodness of my heart. Or if you just have generalized questions like, there is every mistake and every success we have found with over 5,800 virtual assistants. So um, I say that to say I do have a US-based team. Um, I have about 103 virtual assistants that work for me personally on my payroll. Um, the other 5,800-ish are obviously employed with people like you guys and across all of the industry. So I say that I'm a practitioner of virtual assistants. Um, anybody want to guess how many of my first 10 virtual assistants are still with me to this day? Zero. Zero of my first 10 are still with me to this day, right? Because I messed up. I said, VAs don't work. They don't work. They don't work. They don't work. They don't work. And guess actually who didn't work? Me. I was a shitty person and a shitty manager. Now, part of that was my age and lack of leadership experience, but it more importantly was a lack of me doing the self-development work. If you say VAs don't work, well, then you say Ben Kinney doesn't work, Kevin Kaufman doesn't work, Fred Weaver doesn't work, and any high producer doesn't work. If you say, I hired an admin, they said it earlier, do we just all of a sudden just give up and st stop doing things? Oh, man, we're about to get a number six on the screen. <laughs> That was not me, by the way. They're just messing with me back there for calling them old. Um, but so I just say that. So we're going to get tactical today. Obviously, what's really interesting is I only put this slide up here to go, you can be anywhere in three years. Never in a million years did I think that we'd have 5,000 plus placements, 100 plus on my team in three years, because I was going into this in LA with nothing, right? So anybody ever hear this, comparisons to Thief of Joy? Anybody believe that? I personally believe that comparison is only a thief of joy if you're emotionally immature. This is something that Dustin Runyon, who you guys will hear speak, taught me. 
comparison is really good if you don't beat yourself up after the comparison. I compare myself to bigger companies than I am, and then I look at the difference in our companies, and I figure out what I want to implement to get to that next level. If I look at them and go, ah, shit, they're way better than me, and then I beat myself up, no different than you guys. If you look at the high producer and go, I'm not there yet, you beat yourself up, then it's a thief of joy. But using comparison is huge, and that's why you guys are here. You're comparing your business, the people that are on stage, the people that you meet out and about, and when we can get to that level of comparison where we're like, oh, I'm still doing really good things. I might just do a tweak here and there. It's not a thief of joy, and it can actually propel our business. You guys ready to dive VAs? Cool. We're going to get tactical. There are only two things that virtual assistants can leverage, personal activities and business activities. When people with me start with virtual assistants, most of them immediately, what do you think the number one hire request I get is for a virtual assistant? They want someone to do their cold and they want them to do the cold calling because they don't want to. And yet they don't have success with cold calling because they have me hire them someone to do something that they don't like to do. That synergy is not a good synergy for success to just hire people to do things that you don't like to do. So usually when I take virtual assistants, we're going to look at what personal activities in your life do we need to leverage. If we can leverage personal activities in your life, what does that give you more back of? Okay, now how are you going to reinvest that time? That's up to you. In this market, if you reinvest your time into watching Netflix, you're going to be a part of that 15, 20, 25% behind. If you reinvest that time into holding three, four, five open houses a weekend, great, you're going to have success. We find that most people that hire virtual assistants and fail with them, they get some leverage back, and then they reinvest that time in shitty things more time at the bar, they don't go and work out with it. I mean, so when I reinvested time with my VAs, I reinvested in Legion. Obviously, I didn't reinvest it in the gym, right? We all know that. It's a lot of us. So personal activities. The second one is business activities. I completely agree with someone on stage earlier that said you really don't need leverage from zero to two. I really agree with that. If you can't be closing two homes of deals, you're not ready for it. So what do you think the number one reason is people say, I'm, I don't want to hire? Like, let me ask you a question. Who, who's, who's willing to play with me? Let's, let's go, Paul. Paul, how big's your team? One self. And you have a virtual assistant and things like that. Right? Why don't you have 25 admin on your team? You don't need them, right? But you also, if I said you need to go hire 25 admin tomorrow, you might say I don't have enough capital, right? Capital. So when we look at why we don't need leverage, when we get into the real estate industry, we get into the real estate industry, how much does it cost you to get into the real estate industry? What's that? Not a lot, like three grand, right? So when we get into the real estate industry, we get in a room with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that the biggest risk that they took to get into the real estate industry was three grand. Guys, real estate is not a risky industry. And, when I, and, I, and a lot of you guys are like, Justin, I left a corporate career. I left my job for this. How dare you say that it's not risky? Well, when you left your corporate career, could you always go back to that? So when we get in the real estate industry, we look around and we just see all these solo agents with no leverage. And let me be clear, being a solo agent is not a problem, but being a solo agent with no leverage can be a big problem. Being a solo agent is not a bad thing. Like lean and mean is also okay. So we get into this industry and we're conditioned for no risk because we look around and 90% of the industry just isn't taking risk. And so Anybody ever, and some of you guys will hear this, it's a repeat. Anybody ever know anybody that started a restaurant before? When you start a restaurant, does it take some capital or does it take some capital? When you open a restaurant, you go, I need a front of the house, I need a cook, I need you know, someone to do the finances, I need someone to be the busser, I need someone to do that. So in that industry, you get into the industry and you know from day one that you're going to have to hire people. So you usually have to take a loan. You usually have to take all these risks. And so real estate's really not that risky compared to most businesses. You don't have overhead for the most part. You don't have you know, reserves, capital needs. We'll talk a little bit about that. So the reason why people don't hire more, it's all rooted in money. It's almost always a salary cap issue, right? So you, here's the challenge I have for you, the first challenge. I believe that everybody has the money for leverage. And, and here's why. How many of you guys own a home? Raise your hand. Do you own a home? How many of you don't own a home want to own a home? How many of you are in the business of helping people own homes? 
perfect. So when you're in the business of helping people buy homes, right now to convince someone to buy a home, it's harder because interest rates are high, and interest rates play a fact into your business because people have to take a loan out. Now, Paul, if I go, if you're trying to convince a new home buyer to buy a home, you're probably giving them all these good things about home ownership. But the number one thing is buying a home is a good what? Investment. Buying a home is a good investment because putting the money out for the home, even if it stretches your budget, even if it's kind of you know, daunting to own a home, it's a good investment long term. But as agents, when we go, I go, hey, if you just got an assistant, that assistant would give you 40 hours back a week, and that 40 hours a week, you could go lead gen the entire time. Guys, that investment will make you more money than real estate ever will. The only thing that makes more money than real estate is your business. If you look at anybody that acquired a lot of real estate, unless you're doing a Pace Morby method, which by the way, amazing, I know he's speaking tomorrow, it does take some capital, it does take capital. So I say that if you're trying to convince people to own a home, yet at the same time you're being a hypocrite and going, I don't want to invest any money in a person, I don't want to do that, right? It, 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 it can cause friction in our business. So this is where we're gonna get tactical. For people that don't have virtual assistants or you have, this year, we're going to place about 2,400 virtual assistants. We've ramped up a little bit in growth. These are the top eight hires that we hired last year. Now, for the next probably eight minutes, I'm going to go through the job descriptions and the exact day-to-day -day opportunities of these people. Is that OK? You guys cool with that? Go through the day-by-day -day of exactly what they're doing for me and my business um, through here. So. Step one, what is a VA and the benefits? Most of you guys know a VA, for the most part, in the real estate industry comes from the Philippines. Um, the primary language is English. Um, currency exchange benefits, the I'm going to give you an average. You can get a rock-solid virtual assistant. It should be right at about 4 to $5 an hour. That should be the sweet spot, 4 to $5 an hour. If you go screw Sphere Rocket, screw whatever company, I'm doing it myself. Four to five dollars an hour should be the sweet spot. So if you're not getting what you need out of four to five, it can be found. A lot of this has grown from the new world of Zoom, right? So I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks on virtual assistants, whether you have them or not. You will exponentially have more success with virtual assistants if they sit in a Zoom room eight hours a day. If you walk into my office every morning, I have a screen in my office, and all 100 team members are sitting there in the Zoom room all day. A lot of you guys operate virtual assistants like computers. You send them something to do, they send it back. Maybe it's slightly wrong. Guys, that's any admin. You, you send it back, you do this back and forth, and over an eight-hour day, you felt like nothing got done. In 20 minutes, I can talk to all 100 people and go, marketing, I need this, I need this. So putting them in a virtual office. Um, Deanna Dopsoff, who is in here, is also one of our coaches. Uh, she can help you guys kind of walk through that strategy. They pull it off really, really well. So Ben actually talked about it earlier, the hourly rate, just to remind some of you guys, if you're a $100,000 a year agent now, or you want to be there, $51 an hour. Back in the day when I was mentored by Gary Keller, he would always say 10% roughly when you're first getting started can go to salaries. So if you're making $51 an hour, four to five, that's where virtual assistants become a great option. 200,000 is 102 an hour, and so on. So. So we're going to get tactical. We're going to go through those lists now. But before we go through all those lists, the number one thing I want to tell you guys, I'm a little crazy. A little crazy. You, you want to know how crazy I am? Number one, I, I'm only married because my VA found my wife on Tinder for me. Some of you guys are like, is that true? Absolutely. Absolutely true. So if you need a dating class, I was given one last night out at the cocktail hour. Have your virtual assistant do it. But I, I point this activity out. I strapped a GoPro to myself for about two weeks straight. And what I did was is I analyzed all the things in my business that, number one, I was doing so I could leverage it, or number two, the things that I wasn't doing so I could maybe leverage that as well. A great example of this, who in here works by sphere of influence a lot? Sphere of influence, a lot of us, right? Every single morning, I would wake up, I would grab my phone, and what do you think I did for the first 30 minutes extra while I was laying in bed? Scroll Facebook and, and social media, and I was interacting with my potential client. Is that good for business, yes or yes? But then, when I looked at the tape of what I was spending 30 minutes on, guess what I realized? I could have someone else scroll my news feed, like, heart, and comment, and no one would know. That's 30 minutes back now that I could either spend with whatever, right? If you've got kids, spend it with your kids. If, you want, if you're big into health, spend it in your health. 
it could just be sleeping for 30 more minutes based on this talk up here, whatever you want to do. I sleep like 10 hours now. That talk confused the heck out of me. I think I got to sleep like 20 now. So I maybe I need more VAs to help me sleep 20. Uh, but stop by my booth. I guess we have a sheet for you. Uh, but so here we're going to go. So the very first position that most people um, will stop with and start with is an executive admin. Now I'm going to be fully transparent. I'm going to poke some fun at you. A lot of you guys are about, you're about to take pictures of a screen that you will never revisit again. So after this conference, I paid enough money, I'll have my VAs call you and send you a big file with all of them. So don't worry about it. But you can, you, if you still want to do it, I'm not going to shame you. So executive admin, these are all the top duties, you know, and I'm not going to go through each and every one, but the generality of an executive admin is to, number one, take all your personal activities, paying bills, you know, coordination of kids' schedules, coordination of your schedule, confirmation of Zoom calls, just a whole slew of things. Again, because I want to be tactical with you guys today, I'm not going to go through every one, but I'll make sure to send it all to you. This is a breakdown of our VA schedule. Now, I'm going to send you guys one that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday that has variation, but you'll see kind of the breakdown of the schedule. The number one mistake outside of some of the other ones I said with virtual assistants is we don't give them SOPs, we don't give them schedules, we don't give them task lists, things like that. So a great example of this when I was doing the audit on my personal life, I started to get rental properties. Is anybody, would anybody be scared to have your VA take over paying bills for you? Would anybody be scared of that? Why might you be scared of that? They can steal your what? Guys, give them a credit card with a limit on it. They can't steal more than the limit. And even if they steal the limit, guess what you can do? Call, you can cut it off and call the co credit card company. It's legal. You can do it. We've been through it with our lawyers and everything. It's totally fine. So just know that every limiting belief there is, you can overcome it usually at some level. So this is usually the schedule of an executive admin. They work 8 to 4, um, obviously with a lunch. Um, virtual assistants in the Philippines, they need to work your time zone. Never let a virtual assistant say, I'm going to work the opposite time zone and stay on. you stay on yours. That it does not work that well. It is very hard. The only virtual assistant we will ever let work on a different time zone is our video editor. So like today, I'll get all the content of me speaking here. I'll send it to my team. They'll work on it overnight. I'll be posting it on my Instagram and all those by tomorrow morning. Video editors are the only ones we allow to work on a different time zone. So obviously, the second position, uh, marketing VAs. We do a lot of this. Um, it, the v marketing VA does a lot for me personally. You can hire a marketing VA for your entire team or your company, but I'm just focusing on what my personal eight do. Obviously, we have some for the team, and we'll talk about that. So marketing VAs, top duties. Um, the marketing VAs, for me, work a few more hours a day because I want them to be, they usually work eight to nine to 10 hours a day, but I compensate for that because it allows them to work in the peak zones of 7 a.m. all the way up to about 6 p.m. So they do work 60-hour weeks for me, but they also make way more money than any of our other virtual assistants. This is probably the biggest one going into this market that we're seeing an uptick in is client care managers. How many of you actually call your past clients? How many of you call every past client, even the ones you don't like? Right? Even the ones that talk your ear off? Or, or how many of you don't call your family because, because you just don't want to call them, but you still want their business? And so one of the things, I always say this, people overthink a virtual assistant and they go, I don't want a virtual assistant to call on my behalf because I, it says it's not me, it doesn't sound like me. But when we really dig into it, you're not really ever calling them yourselves. Right? Or if you have a database of unclosed deals or just fear of influence, you're not really calling them. And so you know, a great example of just a very simplistic thing to do in this market with a VA, for $2.50 an hour, yes, that's an ethical wage. I've been over there. It's a great living. $3 an hour, it's something like this. Ring, ring. Hey, this is Sarah with the Justin Nelson team at eXp Realty. I just want you to know that I'm with the client love coordinator department, and my only job is to make sure you always have everything you could possibly need as a VIP client of Justin's. He wants me to tell you that he loves you, and is there anything you need done? That's, that's January. What do you think the script is for February? The same. How about March? How about June? It's the same. Because people will get these VAs and they're like, I don't know what to have them say. Get your sphere of influence to 500, 1,000, 1,500, to have them use that script every single time. Now, do you think these conversations are long and drawn out? No, but re remember, what if your insurance agent did this to you? Do you think you'd remember your insurance agent better? 
What if your dentist did this every month? Hey, is there anything we can do for you? Are, is your teeth hurting? Is, we're just checking in. If you did that 12 times a year, you would never think twice whether it was them or not doing it. You would just feel the love of that company. So that's an easy example. Again, our VAs will do a lot of unique things on the <laughs> client care manager sign. Uh, send out cards is a huge one they do. We're probably sending out 50 to 100 send out cards a day um, just for the virtual assistant. So our VAs do a lot of mailing for us. Um, lead manager, a lot of you guys raised homes, <laughs> or raised hands, should I say, that you guys are team leaders. Does anybody ever feel like they're tired of telling their team that they suck at calling their leads? Yeah. And that you think your team despises you because you're the one always telling them that they suck at calling their leads? We hire this position a lot. We call it the lead police, the lead manager. The VA is an expert in data science. Usually this position will have an MBA of some level in data science. They now become the reporter to your team. They're the ones that are telling you which agents should or shouldn't be off lead flow. And it's amazing when you get an email from Sarah in the lead police department that says that you're not on lead flow because Sarah now is the mean one. You as the team leader can come in and go, well, let, let's deep dive this. Let's do that. You can come from more of a leadership position. And it's almost always the agent's fault. But it allows you to not come off so um, hard. So team onboarding and recruiting. Uh, ben was talking about having his team leaders recruit twice a month. A lot of our team leaders, um, we have a lot of the top of the top. I mean, we're almost at 2,400 clients now. Our average client is all the way from an agent that closes one a month to we have teams closing five to 6,000 a year. The number one thing a team owner right now is getting with us is a virtual assistant to do the team onboarding and recruiting. How many of you guys have a recruiting, onboarding, screening, and the person just no-shows? Just completely no-shows. Waste your time. The VAs take care of a lot of that first screening for us and then lead them down a funnel. Um, so video editors are obviously big in this market. I know I'm kind of flying through this with you guys, but again, I'm going to get to a slide in just a second where you can take advantage and just download it all. So here is what... <laughs> I kind of want to start to wrap up on. How many of you believe that one day a business should be big enough to afford a $50,000 salary? How many believe that? How many believe that if you actually want to do what you want to do for your family, for your life, for whatever your goals are, that you should be able to one day afford a $50,000 a year salary? So the number one thing that I coach teams on is if you had $50,000 a year to spend, this is how I would build out a virtual assistant team. Executive admin, marketing, client care, video editor, someone in some type of accounting, and a lead manager. Obviously, if you're more on the solo agent side, you might not need a lead manager, some things like that. But all of those positions would cost you about 3,800 a month. Now, is there payroll tax on that 3,800? No. Is there staffing cost of needing supplies and things like that? Not really. And so you're not paying Social Security on it. You're not paying any of that. So that's the reason why I'm passionate about this, because now we can inject six different positions into people's business. Now, if you only need one, well, then only get one. Because in comparison, most of us, when we started our journey, my first three assistants were in-person, United States-based people. Most of them had no college degrees, and I was paying them three to 3500 a month. And after I started to calculate everything, my person was average. They were trying to, they were being spread thin across too many things because of me. I wasn't a good leader. And so that was costing me 70 grand a year between their salary, the fringe benefits, the overhead for just one employee. So this is the order um, for teams that really scale. So if you're a team that's really scaling over time, um, this is the order that we see most of our teams order in. It just goes a little bit deeper. Did anybody hear something Ben said earlier about make agents see the path to having a forever in your world? That's huge. I remember being like 18 years old and Ben said at some conference, hey, build a world so big that no one ever wants to leave it because they can achieve all of their dreams within your world. One of the cool things about number 10, 11, and 12 is a lot of our top teams will tell their team members, if you close three deals a month and you don't stop closing it, I will give you your own assistant. Now, to the team member, that seems like a life changer because some of your team members are moms, you know, running around with kids. Some of your team members are dads that want to go to their kids' practice, whatever it may be. So giving them for $600 a month, $500 a month their own VA, it can keep them on your team for a lot longer. So 
Um, a few limiting beliefs that people have around virtual assistants and just leverage in general. Number one is they don't want to spend the money, right? Most of us, we find one of the cool things I do with people when they say I don't have money for VAs, I ask them to please send me their Chase financial documents and print them off. And that's a tough coach in me because I want to show you that you do. Now, some people might generally not, but most of the time I go, there's a thousand here, there's a thousand here, there's a bar tab here of $400. You, you have the time and the money, it's just a matter of is it a priority? We all have the time and money to try Boomtown and Sync leads at one time. We all had the money to try Zillow leads at one time. You have it if you want it. Then the next four are all things about your development. I can't manage people, I don't have the time, I can't find good people. You know, and I can't let go of things. I was talking to someone last night that said they're a control freak. I said, that's not really a business issue. Someone else, you guys will hear this conference, his name's Dustin Runyon. He says that there's no such things as business problems, only personal problems that affect your business. Your personal problem of having some type of reluctancy to let go is not a business problem. That is a personal problem that needs to be solved through personal work, maybe therapy. That's where mine was solved um, for that. So. Obviously with VAs, language barrier um, is a big one. Wrong hours, not quality work. Work for multiple people. People think that the pay is unfair, right? Until you go over there, you might believe that. Um, and then I don't have enough work for people. So if you guys have any of those limiting beliefs, I'll help you break them down um, later. But here's the thing, if you guys want all the job descriptions files, this is no information collection, um, but there's two years of paid masterminds that people were paying us 30 to 50 grand a year for, and all the job description files. So if you guys want to download those, I will give you a second. For some reason it breaks, come find us. We have them all printed out too, if you're more of a physical copy person. But there's 50 job descriptions we've hired for over the last roughly three years. It literally will have a breakdown of the hour by hour of their schedule. Who knows what a 30, 60, 90 is? It has a 30, 60, 90 for them in there of what should they be doing in the thir first 30 days, the second 30 days, and the third set of 30 days. So feel free to download that. Like I said, if it breaks, don't tell me. Just go to my team and get a physical copy. Okay, um, I got three minutes left. Are you guys okay if I share with you how you can work with us if you ever need to work with us? Is that fair? Have I earned that with you guys? All right, so before I do that though, I wanna show you why most people don't have a lot of virtual assistants, and here's why. Most virtual assistants companies, before we existed, there was two extremes. You had to either hire them yourselves through Online Jobs PH or one of those, or you had to hire a big company, like a MyOutDesk. Let's take a MyOutDesk for example. On average, $1,800 to $2,200 per virtual assistant. How much of that do you think the virtual assistant makes? I don't know the exact number, but usually it's between about 600 and 1,000. So if you hire a company, and this is a traditional model of VA companies, your first hire is usually gonna cost you about two grand. So then it sends a lot of people over to the other edge and goes, oh, we should do it ourselves because we can save the $1,300 that doesn't go to the VA. Does that make sense to everybody? But these companies are good, right? They help you with training and education. But let's say, Paul, that you're having a great experience with one of those companies and you get a VA and it works for you. You might want another what? Another VA, so Paul gets another one, and then he gets another one, and then he gets another one, and another one, and he eventually gets to seven. Paul now is paying 14 grand a month for seven virtual assistants. 10,000 10, of that 14,000 goes to the company. About 4,400 goes to the VA. Now, a lot of you are like, wow, that sounds like a crime, right? Well, big VA companies have great margins. I'm going to tell you that right now, okay? So the 4,400 is where I got started in the industry, and I said, you know what? I want a team of seven, but I only want to pay the 4,400, but I want to learn to see what I'm doing. So when Sphere Rocket was founded, we have a program that's called Accelerator. P clients, if they need a virtual assistant, they pay me 1000 bucks a month. They can hire their first VA all in their 1600 bucks a month. Now, the cool thing is, is as teams succeed with us, like Kevin and Fred, who might get to two, three, four, five VAs, we never charge them any more money for as many VAs as they have with us. This is where we revolutionize the industry because now people like Kevin and Fred only still pay me 1,000 a month. There's teams with 20 VAs that pay us 1,000 bucks a month. And so you're still responsible for the VA's pay, but can you guys see how this is more scalable? 
because we don't have contracts on the virtual assistant. So that's how we operate um, all the way up to seven. <laughs> Now, if anybody ever needs a single VA with us, um, we did just launch a new single VA program where it's 500 a month plus your VA, so you're all in for about 1,000 a month. Um, this right here, I got about I got 15 seconds left. This is probably the game changer. Has anybody ever s talked to a VA company and then you didn't sign up because they had a 12-month contract? Let's be honest. Who doesn't sign up for things because they got 12-month contracts? Me too. But I had a company that was built on 12-month contracts. And I was like, well, that's hypocritical, but it, it, it's needed, right? We need people to have that time of success. So here's what we did. We started a free trial where during the free trial, for the 1000 bucks a month now, you get a one-on-one -on -one coach. You get a full-time one-on-one coach for the 1000 bucks a month. So if, even if that's all you did, but you're also getting the VAs, all of these things, you get a one-on-one -on -one coach. The one-on-one -on -one coach has, is being paid about 150000 a year from us at Sphere Rocket, so they're high, high-level people. We give your VA a one-on-one -on -one coach. We do all the recruitment for you. There's a course where people like Deanna Dopsloff have contributed. There's over 1,200 videos to this day on every single department that you might need to be built out. There's group coaching. There's a whole bunch of crazy things. I won't kill you with that, but if you guys have interest in booking a free trial with us, we do have 50 spots open for this conference. Again, not a hard pitch. Basically, the way the trial works, for 45 days, you get a VA. You get a coach, your VA gets a coach, and at day 44, if you love us, you're a client. At day 44, if you're like, I don't want my VA anymore, this isn't going to work for me, you can walk away. So that's how we've changed the industry, guys. Uh, if you have any questions for me, I'll be here the rest of the time. But to stay on time, I really appreciate you guys, and uh, I'll leave this up here for a minute, but thank you. Thank you. <laughs>